everybody, this is Perch, and uh, there could almost be a complete separate channel just based on trying to explain weird publishing decisions that the big two make. So I uh, have a question about how, wh how and why they publish or why they aren't publishing to similes and, and things that seem to actually sell well and what's the logic behind that. But before I get to that, have you heard of Crypto Skulls? It turns out a representative of Crypto Skulls wants to start a cooperation with me, Perch, on this channel. They need to attract a bigger audience, and they're looking for advertising. So, if you are interested in skulls, or enjoy bone-like material in your house, and you enjoy cryptocurrency, why not combine both by having digital skulls in your life? Somehow, somewhere. Where do they live? I'm not sure. There's some kind of NFT blockchain aspect to all this. Some of the skulls are, are gold coins, I, I guess. And that, that you could, if you want to be a digital pirate, not the kind that, uh, you know, steals comic books or music, but one that collects uh, gold trinkets that may or may not be actually real, then this is for you. I am killing it with these, uh, you know, with these sponsorship opportunities, by the way. I, I think that um, some of you believe I am serious. So <laughs> let me say now, I am not serious. Um, and uh, no, they... Nobody's actually paying me for any of this, uh, but uh, they do keep asking. Uh, one of them asked, said, we heard your, uh, you know, your great um, ad for the NFT ghost, what, Ghost Baby? Uh, that was a terrible bit of promotion I did for Ghost Baby. <laughs> like, you should stop writing. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Anyway, uh, the question goes, uh, you know, Aperge, almost all of the facsimiles sell well. Many, if not uh, most, outsell the current issue of the same titles. Uh, not, not quite. Um, I don't know about most. It's The similes have sold well in the past, that is true. And over time, they build up volume because they tend to be fairly evergreen. They don't do similes of just every single comic. They do it of, you know, like, hey, here's the issue where Jean Grey dies in the conclusion of the Dark Phoenix saga. And that facsimile is sold very, very well over time. But of course it will, and it doesn't sell well all at once. It tends to, to build up. Um, and then didn't hold value. And in many cases, the orders are higher because people are expecting not to sell it out that month. They're expecting to kind of trickle it in over, over many months. So it's, I don't think it's apples to apples. Uh, that said, I think your point is taken and, and it is true. We'll get back to the rest of your mail, but just th this, it's not exactly, it, it's a different market. It's got a different business purpose. If you have a comic coming out every single month, that's going to achieve certain volume. And if you're putting out a facsimile of one of the more popular issues from, you know, the, the olden days, then, uh, you know, it's, it's not meant to sell month to month. It's, it's, a different, it's a different game. But anyway, let's continue with the mail. They cost next to nothing to produce, and the companies get to charge full price for them, sometimes more. There is clear demand for them on the secondary market as well. So why on God's green earth will they not just start reprinting entire series? Yes, it will show that there is little demand for the current product, but is there anyone that doesn't already know that at this point? By the way, so on this, I do think that they could do a lot more post facilities. Make no mistake about it. I think they could do much, much more. However, if they started reprinting the entire series, you would see those numbers go way, way, way down. Um, it would look a little bit more like second printings, and it would not, it would not have the same effect. Um, I do think there's probably a lot of money to be made, though, by saying, you know, hey, we're going to, you know, monthly publish facsimile copies of, you know, the first 10 issues of Spider-Man and then the first 10, or maybe do it for the year, the first 12 issues of Fantastic Four and the first 12 issues of Captain America and the first 12 issues of Batman. They could do that and that would probably do pretty well and you'd get a ongoing kind of business model for, for you know, a good 8 to 10 years while you worked your way through a bunch of series. That That is true. But by the time you get up to like Avengers 67, you know, not hating on that issue, but... Uh, you know, that, that was the issue with the, where all the quality went to hell. I, I just, I don't know what was in that issue, but now I'm kind of curious, what was Avengers 67? Uh, but, you know, if, when you get higher up, then the, the volume, it would, it would decrease pretty rapidly. Um, but, but anyway, just start Action Detective, Batman, Wonder Woman, JSA, JLA, Amazing Spider-Man, Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Hulk, on, on, and on at number one. Oh, they're doing that already. They're starting them at number one all the time. What are you? No, I'm, I, I just kidding. <laughs> Print the whole series in order and enjoy your newfound wealth and popularity. 
the market has shown over and over again that this would do like it would likely do very well and it's not like they've done it before it's not like they've not done it before sorry the central vertigo x-men classic etc x-men classic is a good example though because x-men classic did do well and then kind of the same effect it got to the point where it started to decrease pretty rapidly as it got past the initial kind of bump of, of popular issues. And, and so that's why, that's why X-Men Classic was ultimately canceled, because as a monthly book, it couldn't sustain itself. Um, this would make me happy beyond words, and I would go from spending next to nothing on Big 2, spending however much they're willing to take. I think this is a product of corporate safety net. If Marvel had to stand on its own two feet and wasn't being propped up by Disney, I think we would have seen this start years ago. Just wondering if you know something beyond the obvious. Um... Well, there's the I mean, the, the answer is in, in the fact that it's not a ongoing long-term business, but there is easy money to be made. So it, you know, it's, it's not like uh, you, you couldn't do this for 50 issues. You probably couldn't do this for 25, but you could do this for 12. And if you're strategic about it, you could have uh, several series going in this format and, and do fairly well. I, I think you would be surprised at uh, where it would settle out, but I think that, you know, if you had a facsimile edition that you, you reprinted, and the thing that X-Men Classic did that you might or might not remember is they had a backup story that was new. And generally, those backup stories were, were done by pretty top talent creators, and, and there was new cover and, and some other stuff there to make it feel like a new product. Now, a facsimile edition is designed to look exactly like how it, you know, it used to. So, you know, page for page, it's a direct copy. And I think that there there's definitely a volume... And so I, what would need to be done for this to be successful is be strategic about what you do. Don't start too many at once because that will tip over the whole thing. Um, do contemplate the pricing. So you might be tempted to sell it for $3.99, $4.99. That would be a mistake. It would be far better to sell it on the cheap, i.e. sell it for a dollar to $1.99, and, and get it into places beyond the direct market. So this would be a place where you'd go to fireworks or box lunch or hot topic or places that have kind of geek culture, you know, that, that type of material. Do a deal with Think Geek if that still exists and get, get the comics there. Um, you could even do something where, and this would be an interesting play, where you set up a subscription service for the simile edition. So basically, you know, as a nostalgia play, say, you know, sign up for the year get by year subscription to Amazing Spider-Man. We're going to give you all the original comics as they originally looked. You know, bag boarded, perfect condition, everything else. And we're going to get you some, you know, I don't know, some patches or some other crap from the past that also look like you could you could kind of lean all into it and do some t-shirts printed in old logo styles and, and all that. And that kind of nostalgic kind of play for comics would sell pretty well. There'd be a lot of people who'd go in on that who would be willing to buy a subscription service to that. And if you're Marvel, you could have, you know, four or five of those running and you could sell it for, you know, $24 a year. You know, well, with shipping and everything else, you're probably higher, but you could probably get, you could get away with like 35 bucks and you get the comic, you get some patches, maybe you get one t-shirt uh, for the year that's kind of printed in the same fashion. And, you, you know, you'd make some money. The, the thing about it is it would be the, the making the money would almost be the secondary thing. That, that would happen. The more valuable thing is that you'd reach a new audience and you'd, you'd basically be marketing your, your comics and your properties to them. And I, I think for companies like uh, Warner Media and Disney, that would be extremely valuable if you were able to tap into that, that world where you were able to you know, make, basically make money from your past while marketing your future. There's there's a lot of value to and and definitely people like that kind of classic collectible nostalgic kind of thing. You, you'd make some decent cash on it. The funny part is, I think the the companies that should do this or the places that are probably best equipped to to make this happen are not Marvel and Disney. It is actually their parent companies. I think that's that's the the group that needs to really take it and run with it. Um, I think that. If you look at uh, if you look at what Disney can do when they put their mind to it with subscription services and and kind of milking this this model, um, they're perfectly equipped to do it to to make this money. And maybe that would tie them closer into comics. I don't know. Maybe that would get them thinking just increasingly that this is just IP to strip mine. I, I don't know. 
I do think there's something to it where um, a lot of it, it's the it's a lack of innovative thinking often coming out of the big two where they they do their comics and they you know they they have kind of very they they have ideas about what people want you know here's how we increase diversity we'll we'll do it through the comics selling to the same place it's a dumb idea but they are not compelled to test that idea they're not compelled to you know look at it and evaluate if if it's working or not they just keep doing the same thing that's that that's where they're at right now that's how they behave there's nothing in their model that's pushing them to try new things and, and innovate. It's safer to do nothing, stay under the radar, and just keep trucking along. And that's why I think you, you don't see them doing ideas like this. That's, where you, that's why you don't see them kind of you know, looking at some of their comics and saying, you know, we, we, can do, we can do more with this property. We can maximize it. We can make money where we weren't making before. There's no incentive for them to do that, swallowed up by big corporations. In fact, if anything... Um, you know, if you try a big idea and it doesn't work, you're like, you know, you're more likely to get noticed and get fired or somebody shows up and, and goes, hey, you know, what are you doing? This is definitely, I mean, I've heard from enough people at Marvel that that is exactly the thinking in upper management of don't get noticed. You know, we're, right now we're swimming along. We're in our own little lane. We're kind of hidden in a little pocket here, you know, uh, with the pandemic and everything. Uh, Feige has been distracted with trying to get the movie business up back on its feet again. And warding off kind of some of those things there and, 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 you know, just keep, keep your head down and don't do anything risky. That's going to get a bunch of people wanting to do some scrutiny on us. And that as a business strategy sucks in creative. So anyway, it, interesting question. Good stuff. I uh, hope I answered it. And uh, I'd I think similes definitely have a lot of money in the bank you could go make from them. So it would be smart business if they did. Uh, so, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Buy Crypto Skulls. They are the wave of the future. Nothing says I am a pioneer of digital technology quite like buying digital skulls. Yeah, very metal. Thanks for listening.